I have a tip and trick for you today and they involve the courgette and the aubergine or in the US it's called zucchini and an eggplant. Don't ask me why they're called different things. So I am going to cut the courgette and then afterwards I'm going to put it into the colander with salt. I'm also going to do the same thing with the aubergine. And the reason that I'm doing that is to draw out the moisture because these two vegetables have an incredible amount of liquid in there and when you cook it then it does release all this water. And in order to make it less soggy you need to add salt to the the courgette and the aubergine otherwise it's going to be very mushy and it's not that appetizing and not too tasteful so let's quickly cut the courgette and i'm starting with the courgette because the aubergine does oxidize meaning it will go a bit browny color if you don't put the salt in immediately. So that's why I'm doing the courgette first. Cut it like into fours so that they cook quickly and it doesn't take too long to cut. So this is the courgette all cut up and now I'm going to do the same with the aubergine. So when I cut into the aubergine and it is exposed to the oxygen then it does get this kind of um kind of this oxidized look where it gets kind of like like a bit darker i'll show you so when you cut it then it starts to change color which is why i normally do it really quickly so that it doesn't change too much because i don't really like the the dark color so then I'm going to cut this into fours and this should be fine. So then I'm going to, you will see after I cut it, that it will have changed somewhat. I think some pieces are bigger than others. I think I need to cut some of the other ones again. So I think maybe I cut the bigger ones, like maybe two more times. So I would demonstrate now. So it is changing colors somewhat, like, like right here. So I'm gonna add it with the courgette and then I'm going to add a lot of salt. So this may seem like it's a lot of salt, but you do need to add it in order to counteract all this um, oxidation. And then you kind of mix it around. And then some of it fell through, so I'm gonna And then I think I also use my fingers to get in there. So this is like maybe a few teaspoons worth of salt. So I am going to allow it to sit for maybe a good hour to really draw out all that moisture so that when I do decide to cook it later on, it will be nice and tasty. Well, it has been over an hour now, and I will show you what happened. Look at the combination of the liquids coming out from the courgette as well as the aubergine. These two have so much liquid in it. I don't even know how much it has, to be honest. But I think it goes to show that um, if that if you put the salt on before you fry it, the aubergines will not absorb as much oil 
if you were to just pan fry the aubergine without the salt, it would soak up all that oil and then it would make it a lot more greasy. So hopefully doing it this way, the aubergines won't be as greasy and you will be able to have a lot more taste to it. So now we are going to cook this veg and have it as a snack. So I like to get it really hot before adding any um, oil to it. So I think the longer you leave it, the better it becomes. Look, it's still dripping out. Okay, it is starting to have some heat coming off it and this is the optimum time to add the oil and this is when my mom would say that it's red hot because you could see remnants of like steam coming off the the dry wok so let's add not too much oil let's add like a fairly good amount and i have a feeling that this garlic is gonna burn okay so let's add in the garlic And now, I want to get it a little bit crispy to impart some of the flavor. It's really hot. All right, now let's add this wet veg. So the size of the aubergine has kind of um, shrunk a little bit because of the lack of water, I would say. Uh, but yeah, hopefully this will be nice and crispy. What are you doing now? Uh, I am going to add some of these shiitake mushrooms to it because they are going to go off today. So it's kind of like a good um, vegetarian mixture. So these are shiitake mushrooms and they add some meatiness to the dish. And I think I need to start eating more healthily. So I think this will be a good addition to the courgette and aubergine. What do you think? Mm. So now let's just add this into the mixture and that's Fry it up on the turn of the heat. The mushrooms shouldn't really take that long to cook anyway. Can we add a bit more oil? I think it's ready now. Look, it looks fabulous. So it does shrink in size after a while. So this is ready. Doesn't this look fabulous? Okay, let's have some of everything. The aubergine, the courgette, the mushroom. Surprisingly, it doesn't taste overly salty, the courgette and aubergine. It, there is a hint of the salt, but it does do the trick. Mmm. Wow, I would definitely recommend making the aubergine and courgette with the added salt because it will make your dish a lot more tastier. Give it a try. Taking time to reflect, Paul? Hmm, yes. I think it's time for you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's Paul and Marcus. On a recent long distance, long, long distance flight we had recently, I discovered a nifty trick that you might find handy. I took my sneakers off, my trainers off, 
and then I put the bottle of water into the sneaker. Take a look at this. Paul, you shouldn't be doing this in public. Have you been drinking too much water again? Don't be silly. I am just standing next to the water feature. And I must say that I do want to feature our YouTube channel. It's Paul and Marcus. So why not subscribe today if you haven't done so already? Hit the subscribe button. Thank you very much. What are you doing? Well, I am attempting to put on my compression socks and they are really good for long distance, long haul flights, because the last thing you want to do if you're sitting for hours is to end up with deep vein thrombosis. I think that's what it's called. Um, basically a clot. Oh. And yes, I know people call me a clot all the time, but basically, what this will do is it it basically holds all your your veins in place <laughs> as far as i know if there are any doctors out there you might want to write in with an actual reason yeah. why but um i wore them on one flight to start with it was quite difficult to get used to because it really feels extremely tight mm. And I don't know if this is what it's like wearing stockings. I haven't worn stockings since I was a child. That's a, another story. Oh my gosh. Yeah, but <laughs> look at that. Oh my goodness. It goes really <laughs> far up. It does. And it holds everything in and place. It, and it goes right up to your knee. It goes right up to your knee. I don't think I had it that far up. Did you not wear them this far? I well, think that I only had it up, up to here. No, they are quite difficult to get oh on, as you can gosh. see. So they're tight and <laughs> they're tight but they're not tights and <laughs> but they're meant to be you see and they are actually quite comfortable once you get used to it all right and the thing that i did notice when i was on the plane um that it it actually sometimes you're sitting your legs might get sore i didn't have any pain at all and it was only when we were in the airport that i realized i still had them on now i must admit that we were on back-to-back -back long haul flights and I only wore them for one of the flights because I thought, oh, I'm just gonna risk it. But, you know, it's a good idea. And we bought four pairs of these. Mm -hmm. So as we would have um, two pairs each on our two flights. I think that I only wore it once too. Now, you probably can buy them in shops if you go looking for them. Specialty. Yeah, but I went on to Amazon and uh, they're not paying me for this and i bought them on there and i think they were was it 19.99 for four oh, pairs okay. so five pounds per pair so i think that's quite good hello oh yes it's paul and marcus on youtube <laughs> I learned this nifty trick from the store that I went into on Waikiki Island. So I wasn't sure whether I had enough time to try on this pair of shorts. And then the guy said to me, do you know what? I have like a really good trick for you. If you are running out of time and don't really have the time, you could put the waist of this shorts around your neck and this is a foolproof way to find out whether or not the shorts are going to fit you or not i didn't really believe him because it sounds very far-fetched am i right are you shaking your head <laughs> so let me show you so you put it against your chin underneath your neck and then it wraps around so if there is space, then it will fit you. Are you going to demonstrate that they do fit? Of course I am. The proof is in the wearing. See, look, it fits. <laughs> <laughs>